All right, ladies and gentlemen, week 116 of the challenge series, near, nearing the halfway mark of the season, <clears throat> and we arrive at the second endurance event of this season. The 80 kilometers, or 50 miles, of Suzuka Circuit await us, and the weather looks a bit temperamental. It's not a guarantee, but there's a certainly high chance of some showers and assorted rainfall. Uh, 14 laps on offer to run the 50 mile distance. 80 kilometers, it's literally the same exact thing. It'd be the same number of laps either way. Uh, 14 laps. Not an evenly divisible number, really, so it'd be interesting to see where the drivers split their pit stops, especially knowing that rain is pretty much an ever-present threat this afternoon. I say afternoon. The race starts in the morning and goes to the afternoon. But uh, without further ado... Uh, down to the track side as we fittingly look at right at the starting grid here in the race preview. So just teleport the camera a few feet, huh? And we are away from the 80Ks of Suzuka Circuit. And the track is dry for now. No rain currently existing. Always subject to change. And the, uh, Perspective driver of this round, this single major event. A uh, person who's intimately familiar with this circuit, Hikari Taniguchi, who's nearly getting turned around by Sophia Meyer heading towards the S's. If he turned in a little early, a bit clumsy on her part, all considered. Uh, but yeah, Hikari Taniguchi, a known owner of Taniguchi Race Team. And his R34 has been redesigned ahead of this week. It's not a huge redo, but it's it's something. A couple of new sponsors on the car and a bit more black on there. Mainly on just the whole roof is now black, where it was obviously not before. He's making swift progress, looking at the top 10. He's going to pass his brother, who doesn't really put up any resistance to the overtake, heading for the hairpin. And a skyline like this is going to be a decent choice for an endurance race. The six-cylinder engine is going to be pretty good on fuel, especially because I do not believe this vehicle has an anti-lag system installed. Getting no room from Stephanie Kaiser. <coughs> so he's going to create some room himself, move to ninth place. But also four-wheel drive means if the weather does get unpredictable and the track becomes a little bit wet. Uh, he'll have more traction than the average rear-wheel drive car will. And believe me, there are a lot of rear-wheel drive cars on the circuit right now. The vast majority of them are, as a matter of fact. I'm kind of looking up and down the higher parts of the running order and the, the, the 959 of Liza Kaiser and fellow GTR enthusiast Takahata are about the only uh, four-wheel drive cars on the track besides Hikari's uh, R34 Skyline. I was not a fan of this happening on the first lap. You need diving a little bit in the hairpin. And uh, finding my rear bumper. So that, uh, that, yeah, that took me pretty much out of contention for this race, which is very annoying because I'm fairly certain I was the only driver to be afflicted with damage on the whole of the first lap. Because someone forgot where the brake pedal was in their Japanese land yacht. Moving back to current time, as the car overtakes that same RCF on the front straightaway. Tries to sneak on the outside of his associate, Takahata, and might just do it. Nope. Momentum stalls. Takahata is able to get to the gas and prevent that there. His brother let him by, but something tells me Kazuya doesn't roll that way, and he's gonna have to fight his teammate to get into sixth place here. And fight they will, even making slight contact, and Mikari getting a little bit of grass on his wheels, but he will eventually finish that off and into sixth place. 
Up ahead, though, are quite a few vehicles that will also have similar advantages to his own car, along with some differing ones as well. For example, uh, Scarborough and Ellie's uh, vehicles are also both six-cylinder engines, but they're a lot lighter than the R34 is. Especially the Porsche Cayman. That thing's also got, like, natural aero by being what it is. Outside of the aero parts that we already put on the car. Combining all of those factors means that this thing is also going to be really good on tires, especially because Ellie herself has a very... I don't know, delicate. I mean, I guess that's a word. She has a very... smooth and almost... If you could, drive, if you could describe a driving style as soft, it would be hers. I'm going for third on Jake Scarborough at 130. Oh, that's not the easiest place to make a move, and it took a little bit of a, a bumper usage, but he'll get it done. Hikari looking for P5 on another driver known for smooth inputs. A lot of, uh, a lot of my Mercury Racing Associates took that old adage of dancing with a car straight to heart. Their, uh, their steering motions are all but choreography sometimes. So they end up being just as good on tires as I am, despite the fact that I have quite a bit of endurance racing experience. Not that Hikari doesn't also have that, he probably has some kind of plan to deal with the fact that his car will be wearing out tires a little more than the rest of these top few here. That said, Jake clearly is not applying that Midas touch right now. His fronts are just as bad as the Kari's, and his car is rear-wheel drive, which is a really bad sign, especially because his rears are also noticeably worse already, and he's only done two laps and change here at Suzuka. Water's still hanging on, but not by much, as the Kari will soon overtake on Stella St. Germain. Driver who's not made a whole lot of starts at Suzuka, or really just been here much at all. Relatively unfamiliar, ter unfamiliar territory to her in comparison to the likes of Hikari and Ellie here in the top few. Even Liam Cubley, his racing team has made at least one or two appearances at the, I believe it's the nine hours of Suzuka that WEC does. I'd have to double check that. Um. There's an endurance race here that's not associated with Super GT because everyone knows the Suzuka Thousand Ks. We're doing like like one twelfth of that. <laughs> We're doing like seven percent of that or something like that. No, eight percent. Yeah, we're doing 8% of that, duh, right here, it's a thousand kilometers. And it's still gonna feel like an endurance race simply because uh, not a lot of us are endurance drivers like Hikari is. He's done the Suzuka 1000 kilometers recently. I don't remember if he's won it though. I'd have to double check that or ask one of the other people. Um, regardless, he's run it, he's completed it before. I don't know if he's won it, but he has finished it at least once or twice or a few dozen times because it's part of the Super GT calendar. But regardless, or, or JGTC is what I've been known when he was doing it. Uh, Liam's, Liam's not showing the most pace through the S's. His rear tires are already kind of getting worn out, and he's already just going to mug him on the exit of the S's. That's an unorthodox overtake. That you could get such a better run out of there. I guess that's four-wheel drive for you, though. And now he will be off in pursuit of the Porsche Cayman driver that's been leading the way thus far. Doesn't take him too long to get there. A very dramatically different braking technique. And one that seemed to work a little better. Getting, uh, definitely filling her mirrors right now. Head on board with him as he uh, heads onto the back straight away in pursuit of that Porsche, using all of the racetrack and a little extra. He's got a good tow here too. 
probably want to switch back to the uh, trackside camera and see maybe he executes the overtake contact made ellie doesn't really give him a whole lot of space they remain relatively clean on the uh, exit and hikari will take the lead away ellie sneaks her nose down the inside for a second but hikari will uh hold that off i forgot words there and we have the first pit stops limbs low on fuel as are many other drivers Pretoria's car is not very fuel efficient and she knows that I would have thought Stephanie's would be more fuel efficient but I guess that's a V8 in that Carrera GT not a 6 like the Cayman has I'm surprised the Jaguar is as fuel efficient that thing's like a V12 or something I think a lot more cylinders than 6 I know that and that's what the rest of the top 4 are you top 5 out actually top 6 I think are using Everybody else that has any pits besides St. Germain has a much lower cylinder count than that XJ, XJR, XJ220. Look at Alice's fuel tank! That thing is efficient as hell and fitting appropriate, and fitting appropriate, fitting appearance for the car given that it looks and apparently even acts like the Takata Dome NSX. Pennzoil Skyline versus Takata Dome NSX. I don't even know. I know they are from the same era. Dumb question, Riker. I did not play Gran Turismo 4. Or 3 for that matter. Um, but yeah. Kind of just sitting through the pit cycles here, I think most of the rest of the field will have to refuel at the end of this lap if they did not 4. I've never seen that camera before. Car is lit up his signal, so he's going in. Ellie, same thing. Saint Germain, yep. Scarborough in. His tires are a little worn as well, but Kenaguchi's been a much cleaner on his tires, and he's got a bit of fuel left. He's he will trudge on. As will Alice Carson, whose tires are basically not wearing at all. What in the hell? Are we sure she didn't just bring a a, a down-tuned Group 2 to this race? Did she just bring the Takata Dome NSX and just took some of the aero bits off it so it'd be more inconspicuous? Mm. Ellie has jumped Taniguchi out of the pits, courtesy of not needing to put as much fuel in the car. And also because Ikari took tires. Interesting, maybe he's trying to go to the end from here. His tires were definitely fine. But he might be double sneaking that set. Well, I'm pretty sure most other people will be pitting on the final on the final stint and putting new tires on for the last four to five laps. That said, Alice Carson may not need to actually change her tires at all. She is she is that easy on the tires. I think. But also means she's probably not pushing, and therefore Ellie and Hikari are probably going to catch her rapidly. As we're out of the hairpin, Hikari, once again, using four-wheel drive advantage, he's going to have a big run on that Porsche. He's going to try and get it done up towards the spoon curve. The outside is going to be difficult to hold, especially when Ellie's washing up a bit. Crossover administered! Oh, that was poetry in motion. Ugh. I'm going to go back to the drawing board on that one, Ellie. She, that, was, that was hard to look at. I mean, it was good to look at, because it was so well done, but uh, as a teammate of yours, ouch, basically. <laughs> Alice finally accepts her fate. She will retire to the, not retire to the pit lane, I still think she's out of the race. She will head into the pit lane with only 10% of her fuel left, so... Hikari will retain or return to. I am getting my R words confused. Return to the race lead as we pass the halfway mark of Suzuka's 80 kilometer endurance race here. Well, while Alice Carson was pitting, Stephanie Kaiser snuck a little fast one in on Leon Cubley to get into the top five that the camera would like to catch up. An inside lane, even at a corner like that, is still pretty powerful. 
but uh, Liam's 4GT has insane straight line performance and kind of muscled its way in almost around the outside of Stephanie, but uh, she took a bit of defense and wasn't taking his shit. Stephanie is looking for a peek on the XJ220, but is not going to find it. It's still going to be dove by a GT. Four Jaguar and Porsche, three companies no strangers to endurance racing and producing endurance cars. Not that Nissan is either. Now, so there's another Porsche up here. So there's there's some pedigree going on here <coughs> in the top five. The cars behind this this top five, not so much. Alfa Romeo not known for its sports car racing. Lamborghini not really either. Toyota recently, but not for long. Like, and historically, not so much. Down the inside at 130R, St. Germain's gonna break super late in defense. Probably out of self-preservation about as much as defense, really. That was a line from Stephanie, and the car lets her know that it was not appreciated. Had to catch the Carrera there. The Carrera's got some straight line performance, too, and a better run down the hill. Too wide at the start of lap 8. Contact made, forcing Stella wide onto the curb there. The XJ might come back at the Carrera, but I think it's a little late for that. So there's now a Porsche 23 as we uh, head for the S's for the 8th time this way. And Cubley's taking a peek at Stella, heading towards the hairpin. The outside lane's not going to get you too far normally. It's not even like St. Germain's like been bad on her tires or anything, she just doesn't have race pace. Cubley is just a little bolder. And Stephanie is as well, but her tires are really just not happy, not happy with this. Meanwhile, having changed his Hikaris are in almost perfect shape. Although he does have to take them for nine more or nine laps, so he's still kinda having to be a little bit cognizant of not using them all the way up. Uh, Porsche battle. Stephanie's not just not just happy with second. Or with third, I mean, excuse me. And goodness knows, I I do believe that she and Ellie have a little bit of a rivalry. Nothing like this nothing like what we'd see out of, say, Cam and Liam Cubley after Tokyo last week, or RSL with every member of Mercury Racing. The battle is over prematurely as Stephanie returns to the pit lane for a second pit stop. The Carrera not at all fuel efficient. Meanwhile, Ellie and our leader will be going for two more laps before they do the same. Same with Stella St. Germain, in fact. Jake should also be able to do the same, but remains to be seen. In about this later midpoint part of the race, I had found myself completely in no man's land. I didn't know what I was doing. My, my pit cycle was thrown all the way off from getting damage on lap one, and I... I had like kind of like a almost a fake like an imposter syndrome going on here of like I don't belong up here. I'm only here because I pit on lap one. Look where I am compared to the vehicles that have similar fuel loads than me. I'm not super far off Taniguchi, well, Akira, but Jake is the whole spoon curve ahead of me. And that's like the guy I'm technically fighting, other than Akira. I'm not fighting any of these guys back here because they've, they're they they're done with their pit stop. I'm literally just playing moron in the middle. I say moron like it was my fault I got crashed into by uni being a klutz, but that's beside the point. We, uh, well, as the leaders start lap 10 anyway, not everybody. This just kind of annoys me because this proves that if I was to, if I was running here off cycle, if I was able to pit on you know my normal lap times, you know, I would probably could have been competing for the win of this thing. I don't, I wait, I don't want to think. I don't. Whoosh. I don't think that's a stretch to say that I could have been competing for the win. I was catching Akira. His tires were worse than mine, and I don't understand how that happened because. I was pushing just to try and remain relevant, and yeah, I wasn't the only car that got damaged in the race, I don't think. 
I don't know, I didn't ask around, but... Oh my god, Akira's tires are shredded. I didn't know that they were this bad. If I don't know they're this bad, I'd have probably, like, forced my car in somewhere and just made him use them up more. Look at his tire wear compared to Jake's. They're in the same car. That's obscene. I'm losing my mind because I'm trying to figure out what to do with Akira, and here comes Cubbly. He's got all that V8 horsepower. I say that like I don't have a V10. Akira, I, I, I don't even know what I'm doing with this one. I'm just trying to freak him out, really. Eventually, I do get under his skin, and I kind of force... I do force myself into the situation and get into fifth, but, you know, only for the moment because my fuel tank is, like, fumes. But I, man I, man but I basically managed to get back on cycle with everybody else, just by luck. Stay late and dollar short though, I would say, because I'm here, while the rest of the people on my cycle are up here at the pit lane, so... A bit of a Pyrrhic victory. Ikari once again jumped by Ellie in the pits. The fuel efficiency of the Cayman is helpful. And this time it's not because of a tire change because Hikari didn't take tires, and his are still better than Ellie's because she decided not to change hers, which is an interesting call. Rear grip is going to be at a premium for that Porsche driver, but Hikari's rear grip is going to be fine because he's in a four-wheel drive car. It's his fronts that are a cause of concern. Especially his front left. That thing is going to be falling apart here. And I had to try and take a risk. I didn't change my tires. I I don't know if that was really the right call because, you know, a lot of the cars behind me did do that. Akira, Jason Gans, Sophia Meyer, Nico did. So it, it's a weird place. It's like, Kotori's on fresh tires ahead of me. She may, she would have to pit again though, so. It was, it was a weird middle ground I found myself in. I wasn't even sure if my tires could make it to the end at this point, and I was always super, super, like, hyper aware of that. Allison's, Allison? Alice Carson has started to wear her rears out a lot as the race has gone on. It had begun what would be probably the final lap of the race for this, the typical endurance race based on a 25-minute timer. But because this is a 14 lap race, we will have obviously two more to go after this one. After this one. And you can see, yeah, uh, Hikari is being a little more, uh, being a little more careful on, on, uh, on right-handers. Because those are the corners that are wearing out his left front. He's still whipping it around right-handers like this. Almost a little too much, as a matter of fact. Almost finds himself in the grass, trying to push the outside tire for everything it's worth. The field is very spread out. I mean, I guess what do you expect from an endurance style of race? But like, it is crazy how spread out it is. Somehow, in spite of all the tire wear that I have on these tires, I'm still keeping pace with Kotori in front of me, and Jason Gans, in spite of having fresh tires, is of no immediate threat to me. It also looks like he wouldn't have the gas to get to the end anyway, so... It's all the same. Yeah, Liam's, uh... Liam's... Uh, Liam, a few cars' gas tanks are giving up on him here. And those are crucial pit stops that couldn't really have been avoided just due to the lap count. If this were a 25 minute race, like other endurance races are, they'd been fine to finish where they were, but... Two laps to go, and Hikari's front tires are... shells at this point. Just empty husks that are still somehow allowing the car to even turn at all. Ellie's aren't ecstatic... Ellie's aren't excellent, either. Her rears are sh actually just as bad as her fronts, but her fronts are slightly better 
than what the R34s are looking like at the moment. You have to use engine braking. He doesn't want to overload the tires under heavy braking more than he has to. Man, Jake, no, it's not Jake. That's Jake's ahead of him. He's some flying because he's hit. Brian Ice, he is on the razor's edge with those tires. All four of his are about as bad as Hikari's left front is, if not worse. If he's somehow, well, he's not going to be able to. He's going to be out of fuel before he can even get across, so. He uh, overestimated. He took driving lessons, but he did not take strategy lessons. I don't think you can necessarily teach that the same way you can teach driving talent. Final lap of the race for the 80 kilometers of Suzuka. Hikari has led most of it. The second he grabbed the lead, he has never let it go for long. Oh, but his tires are letting go. He almost finds himself in the gray area out there. Lucky to keep the car on the circuit, all considered. Left front's given up on him. Brian Ice is in the pit lane. His tires can go no further. Nor can his fuel tank. Even Copley had to take only a splash of fuel. And he was forcing himself upon me within due time. Ironically, he still had less gas than me. <laughs> Not by much, but it was less. The difference in tire wear between these two cars is hilarious. And at this point, Ellie should be looking to force the issue, but I don't know if she trusted her own tires. The car seemed to have more faith in his than she in hers, despite the fact that his left front was literally in shreds, I think, when he crossed the start-finish line. But he's still aggressive on throttle. I mean, I guess why not, right? It's his rears that are... His rears are fine, just fronts are the problem. Oh, very close to that white line. A corner that barely means a whole lot in some race cars, but with these conditions, that corner feels like it's a hairpin. Much less the actual hairpin or even spoon curve. That left front tire, that's like a pixel's width of white bar. Three corners to make left. Relatively slow through 130R compared to what he'd been doing. And Ellie is not going to really take it much faster. She's not. She's not even going to put up resistance. Hikari. She probably didn't trust her tires either, as I had said. So down the hill one more time, and Hikari Taniguchi is going to make the tires stretch. Hikari Taniguchi, victorious in the 80 kilometers of Suzuka. And man, he won, but his tires definitely lost. They are but a shred of them, a shell of their former selves. LEP2 finishing exactly where I believe she started this race. Stella St. Germain will come across in P3, which is only one down to where she finished. Was she out of fuel at the end there? And I don't know how I got here. It really makes you, mirror really makes you wonder where I would have been if Uni knew how to brake. My tires are just as bad as Ikari's. And I was on fumes, so I somehow salvaged a fourth place after damage on lap one. Liam Cubley, fifth place. The replay has run out, but Liam fifth, Jake sixth, Stephanie seventh, Allison Akira's alternative pit strategies didn't really do a whole lot for them, all told. And a bit of karma for Uni as she's relegated to 16th place. She didn't even get damage when she hit me, so she must have either hit or been hit by someone else. Go figure. Replay cameras didn't pick it up, though, so we'll never exactly know. I had a bit of a dub moment. I, like, forgot how to count 20. But, um, yeah, that is the <clears throat> 80 kilometers of Suzuka in the books. Uh, <clears throat> Hikari wins it, and obviously he's a big name around here. He's won a fair share of races at Suzuka, inside and out of the JGTC and Super GT. 
So he's had more than enough experience with the circuit to really just control the race. Once he got to the lead, he was able to keep himself at his own pace and still managed to keep Ellie in his rearview mirrors the whole way around. But that'll do it for week 116. A bit of spare time to behold for the rest of the drivers as we get closer to the halfway point of Season 3 here in the Challenge Series. And that halfway point is looking to be quite a boiling point for a number of things. But most people know it as the Grand Valley 60 kilometers. But you're looking at adjusting the distance for that. 60 is a little short considering we just did 80 Ks of Suzuka. So, stay tuned. It might be bumped up a little bit. Who knows?